in this lecture 2 of earthquake engineering i will discuss earthquake or uh, slash seismic waves and earthquake analysis methods focus and epicenter the point within the earth along the rupturing geotechnic uh, geological faults where an earthquake originates is called the focus or hypocenter under the earth where the earthquake originates that point is called focus or hypocenter this earthquake originate on the fault line that are present on the plates okay this point is called hypocenter or focus the same point on the earth surface is called epicenter the point on the earth surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter earthquake waves radi radiate out from the focus okay from this surface this, from this point the waves originate in each direction okay and let me clear one more point when the earthquake waves within the earth then these waves are called body waves the waves which are when originate due to earthquake the waves which remain within the earth uh, that is called body waves and when these waves radi radi out, radiate towards the surface of, uh, of earth then these waves become the surface waves okay uh, the difference between body and surface waves i will discuss later in detail the focal depth is the depth of the hypocenter below the epicenter the distance between the epicenter and the hypocenter is called focal depth focal distance Foc focal distance is the distance from the hypocenter to a given reference point for example at this point uh, you have installed the earthquake recording station okay at, at this point the distance from this point to this point okay from the recording station to this point where the earthquake originates the distance is called focal distance earthquake slash seismic waves the waves which uh, originated at the ruptured zone are called body waves and are of the following two types okay the waves which originate due to earthquake are called body waves and they are following of two types p waves and s waves first one is the p waves p waves or primary waves or dilation waves these waves include uh, these waves involve particle movement parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave Man means when the earthquake travels okay uh, then the particle movement parallel to the direction of propagation okay let me show the first figure here uh, here in the p wave uh, this is the direction of uh, movement of the waves okay this is the more uh, uh, clear picture when the p waves moves okay these waves moves just like a spring compression uh, elongation compression elongation or compression dilation okay uh, in the uh, in the let me here these waves involve particle movement parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave as shown in figure next is s waves or scandry waves or shear waves the same name of the s waves these waves involve particle movement perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave the particle movement is perpendicular to the direction of propagation here when uh, the earthquake uh, of s, uh, s waves moves okay the motion of the particle is the vertical okay here when the body waves reach to the ground surface part of these uh, waves reflected back while the other part produces surface waves that i have already explained the body waves when reaches to the surface then part of the waves reflected back into the earth and the remaining which reaches to the earth are called surface waves okay surface waves are also further two types are waves produced on the earth surface earth surface due to an earthquake 
and are of following two types r waves or relay waves l waves or love waves okay here is r waves okay that is um, their motion is just like ocean movement and l waves they are transferred to the direction of propagation in that particles moves in the transverse direction in this direction and in this direction when the uh, when the waves moves in this direction r waves or relay waves these waves produce a circular motion analogous to the motion of the ocean waves here when the uh, waves moves their movement is their movement of particles is just like that movement of ocean waves hence rotation along with the vertical movement takes place in case of relay waves as shown in these figures l waves these waves produce horizontal motion along the ground surface transfer to the direction of motion of uh, propagation horizontal motion here horizontal motion okay uh, transfer to the direction of propagation okay earthquake magnitude and richter scale or richter scale both abbreviations are okay okay i will use richter scale uh, this scale is used uh, for the measuring of earthquake record uh, earthquake magnitude okay uh, as predicted scale earthquake magnitude is a measure of energy released during an earthquake when an earthquake uh, originates then the release of energy the measure of release of energy is called uh, uh, is, uh, uh, that is the basic phenomena of richter scale earthquake magnitude is a measure of energy released during an earthquake it defines the size of seismic seismic event but not is related with the damage or effect of earthquake at a given location it means that it uh, this richter scale do not tell about how uh, many buildings are destroyed how many destructions are there okay how many landslides are there. it only tells about the seismic event or the measure of energy okay it do not tell us about the destruction the magnitude of uh, the magnitude of earthquake is usually measured on a richter scale which is a log scale a logarithmic scale that which is a log scale uh, you may heard in, in news or in articles m5 earthquake a richter scale earthquake m7 m8 m5.5 richter scale earthquake uh, this is a measure of energy uh, as per a richter scale a magnitude of m5 richter scale is 10 times greater than the magnitude of m4 earthquake and is associated with an increase in energy release of 31.6 times similarly a magnitude of m5 earthquake is 100 times greater than a magnitude of m3 scale here is an example a m2.5 earthquake generally not felt but recorded on seismographs m3.5 felt by many peoples m4.5 some local damage may occur m6 a destructive earthquake m7 a major earthquake m8 and uh, above great earthquake will cause will cause large destruction now on another scale uh, for the measuring of earthquake that is earthquake intensity and mercury scale the previous one earthquake magnitude now is the earthquake intensity and the mercury scale intensity is an assessment of the effect of the earthquake at a given location and is not directly related to the earthquake magnitude okay let me explain more this is determined not by reading instruments but by observing the effects on structures human life and disturbance to the ground surface this scale measure the effect of destruction effect of damage not from uh, measured from the instruments modified mercury index is based on the observation effects of an earthquake at a specific site here is the mercury scale 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and effect these are the effects if uh, if uh, the researchers feel the effect uh, from these effects then they name the mercury scale 7 8 or 9 okay for example one felt by almost no one similarly uh, seven everyone runs outdoor 
poorly built structure considerably damaged slight damage elsewhere similarly uh, 10 many structure damage ground is badly cracked uh, 12 total destruction waste seen on ground okay uh, the mercury scale is based on effects okay based on destructions based on damage how to measure an earthquake okay here is a seismograph which is used to measure the earthquake seismograph is an instrument which is used to measure the strength direction and duration of an earthquake volcano eruption explosion impulsive reaction uh, impulsive uh, load etc okay uh, whenever there is an motion or vibration this instrument record that waves okay axolographs okay this is the moment of an earthquake axolographs record ground accelerations in optical or digital form as a time history record known as axolorogram we got this data also on our computers uh, in data recording devices okay and used for different purposes analysis of buildings analysis of dams okay so the records that are called axolorogram other name is also time history record ground motion data there are many other names but they are similar to uh, their uh, their purpose is same example earthquake in the history there are many earthquakes arrived uh, some of these earthquakes which caused uh, a major damage um, in the history in terms of life in terms of property in terms of land okay the first one is the strongest earthquake of magnitude 9.5 occurred off the coast of chile south america in 1960 killing at least 2000 people and displacing 2 million people that is a very big earthquake the financial damage occurred by kobe japan earthquake of 1995 was over us 100 billion dollar the most life damage was due to earthquake in chinese province of shenzhou 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 in 1556 causing 830000 fatalities most destructive earthquake of pakistan or uh, earthquake of quetta in 1935 having a magnitude of m7.7 seven killing 30000 to 60000 people and kashmir earthquake of 2005 having a magnitude of 7.6 uh, killing at least 80000 people okay there are two uh, stations they have uh, recorded different values so that's why they are they have shown different value 7.6 and 7.8 al centro earthquake imperial valley earthquake uh, that is also the second name of this al centro earthquake of 1940 mexico is the most studied earthquake for structural analysis and design purposes these earthquake records are also used for the design of future buildings okay so the one of the most used earthquakes al centro earthquake and here is the kobe japan earthquake methods of analysis for earthquake loading okay there are major four methods free vibration analysis response history analysis or time history analysis response spectrum analysis equivalent static or pseudo static load method pseudo mean virtual not real or approximate first one free vibration analysis free vibration before explaining uh, here see an example here is a rod on the rod there is a solid mass is attached that is fixed with ground that is fixed with ground Uh, you push that uh, model towards the right and then uh, remove your hand or finger then the body start moves freely or freely vibrating okay so here is a motion uh, when you push that uh, mass towards the right and uh, left the body start moving here first it will it will got peak magnitude then it will start reducing at at some time it will stop okay after uh, vibrating the body will stop this is called free vibration analysis okay first we displace the body by applying some force then we remove the force and the body start freely this is called free vibration analysis 
if a structure is displayed, uh, displaced by a considerable amount and is then released suddenly, it starts vibration without the action of any external force except the first excitation. Uh, the, the force which we have applied that is called excitation it means we have excited the building, uh, excited that model so that it start vibrating. Okay, first time we have applied the force, then we have left the force, then the body start moving freely. Okay, to study, uh, to study uh, of response of structure when it is vibrating without an external force is called free vibration analysis of structure. What we got from free vibration analysis, this analysis gives as information about natural time period, frequency, resonance, and damping, etc. Okay, that are very important parameters for the design of structures in earthquake. All these properties: natural time period, frequency, resonance, damping, etc. The second method is response history analysis or time history analysis. Response history analysis is the evaluation uh, of response against the elapsed time of a system throughout a non-record of earthquake by solving the actual equation of motion considering all dynamic forces. What uh, this means, uh, we analyze our structures against the actual earthquake records. For example, in the history, there are imperial earthquake, Kobe earthquake, we apply that actual record which are recorded in the history and apply to the building and get the results. Okay, this is the response to history analysis. Response history analysis is the evolution of response against the elapsed time. Here you can see uh, along the y-axis there are acceleration. Uh, the earthquake are basically energy. They are in the form of acceleration. Uh, there is no mass just hit to the building that is energy transfer to the building. Okay, so that's why along the y-axis there is acceleration. Along the x-axis there is a time. Okay, so that's why uh, against the elapsed time of system throughout a known record of earthquake throughout okay from 0 to 12 second we know the all uh, known the whole record by solving the actual equations of motion considering all the dynamic forces okay by considering the all dynamic forces we solve, uh, analyze our structure and study the behavior of structure that is called response history analysis or time history analysis Third one is the response spectrum analysis. It is a uh, approximate method. Okay, uh, response spectrum analysis is a linear dynamic analysis method, which measures the contribution from each natural mode of vibration to indicate the le likely maximum seismic response of an essentially elastic structure. Uh, uh, for example, let me see. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, these are the uh, a typical out of scale response spectrum graphs. For example, our building, any building that has a natural time period, we get that natural time period, and from that time period, we come on the graph. And these graphs are ready for each region for low seismic area, for medium seismic risk area, for high seismic risk area. For example, for any type of zone, we got, for example, our time period 0.5 seconds. And we will go on to our graph according to our, these are damping coefficient, damping 0%, damping, damping ratio 2%, damping ratio 5%. For example, if our structure had damping ratio 5%, okay, normally our concrete structures have damping ratio 5% as per code. 0.5 second, then we will go and here on the left side, we will get the spectral velocity that be, uh, will be used for the design of structures. Okay, for calculating base shear sector forces in the structures. Response spectrum analysis provides insight means details uh, details view uh, of results into dynamic behavior by measuring pseudo spectral acceleration, velocity or displacement as a function of structural period for a given time history and level of damping. Okay, they are uh, gives the detail insights by measuring uh, these are interrelated spectral velocity spectral acceleration uh, and uh, spectral displacement okay uh, we got the values and then we go for design okay that is called response spectrum analysis 
Now the fourth one is the equivalent static or pseudo static load method. In this method some equivalent static forces there are no graphs there are just specific values for example uh, if you are designing for a medium uh, risk area of earthquake uh, then you will just pick the values as per given uh, guidelines or codes you will pick the medium uh, earthquake values and apply to the structures and then you, uh, you can design your building so in this method some equivalent static forces are applied approximately to get the effect of vibrations according to the fundamental and higher modes of vibration. Uh, now in the further lectures these two terminologies will come often fundamental and higher modes of vibration. Okay yeah. In the free vibration analysis when I, I will push uh, I have pushed that uh, model on the right side then after releasing the force the body will come to its original position go left then will come back to the uh, gain at that point then come to its original position it will complete its first cycle this first cycle is called fundamental period uh, but it doesn't mean the uh, the model will stop the model uh, will take lesser vibration until it stop then the next mode that is second mode third mode fourth mode the first cycle is called first mode second cycle second mode third cycle third mode okay so according to fundamental and higher modes of vibration this method is recommended by almost all design codes including ubc uniform building code national earthquake hazard reduction program neh rp national building code nbc national building code of canada building code of pakistan and saudian building code so and sufficiently accurate design of buildings okay this method gives sufficiently accurate design of buildings so that's all for today's lecture have a nice day